Welcome to PLZ Soccer's One to One. I'm delighted to say our guest is Kevin Twaddle, former professional footballer with a number of clubs, St Johnston, Motherwell, Hearts, to name but a few. He's had a colourful career um, and I think possibly quite a lot of people will know you, Kevin, for that dramatic book that you'd written and blowing a million pounds on gambling and all the trauma uh, that comes with that. We'll touch on that for a wee uh, minute or two. But first and foremost, how are you doing in lockdown? Yeah, thanks for having us on, Peter. Um, yeah, doing doing fine. Um, I embarked on a wee, a wee thing last year. I got a wee bit down in the dumps last year, last January. Um, and... Thought about doing a, it's for addicts, like when I've been in GA and stuff like that, there's a wee thing called a recovery programme, so I, I went into that, kind of just to try to change life a wee bit, it wasn't about the gambling, it was just about trying to deal with life a wee bit better and stuff like that, and it took me nine months, but it's the greatest thing I've ever done, it's certainly changed my life in, in many different ways, and obviously running's been, been one of the kind of things, but it's definitely changed me into a better person as well. Yeah, I, I mean, I follow you on social media. I know you were out there doing the runs. Um, was that, in a way, a kind of a, a a saving grace for you? Because people have been dealing with the lockdown in different ways. It's a, it's affected them mentally, um, and obviously the lack of physical exercise for many has had a real effect on their mood. Yeah, I mean, I, I've got a train station in my state. I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even run seventy meters to get the train. I couldn't move. I was lazy mentally, physically, and yeah, going through this program, this recovery program, gave me the opportunity to open eyes up to a lot of things that one day where I wanted them to be in life. Um, and yeah, one of these things was running. It gave me a chance to go out and kind of explore a wee bit of nature and stuff like that as well. It sounds, it sounds pretty mad. I mean, when I've listened to people <laughs> talking, I'm saying kind of. And it's not the kind of thing that I would normally embark on as well, but you know what? I was sick and tired of life a wee bit and, and tried it. And as I said, it's just, it's opened my eyes up to just so much positivity and it being that better person. And what, one of these things is, yeah, running, um, which has been brilliant. Yeah, I, I hate to say this because obviously we've played more than a few football games together. If I was alongside you and you said to me, look at that beautiful flower over there, I'd have to have a serious word with you. You know that, you, you know that, don't you? <laughs> I think that's a hard part for everybody. I mean, everybody goes through things. I mean, I've been a lost boy through my, through my whole life, to be fair. I've been a, I've got this persona with all these different masks for all different people. And you know what? The day I'm just me, I'm no Kevin Twaddle, a football player, the boy who wrote a book. I'm just me. And I'm kind of happy with that. No one's ever really got to see that kind of side of me as well. And it's took me to go through what I went through last year, which was painstaking. It's the hardest thing I've ever, ever done, um, this wee journey. And... Yeah, I mean, it's just given me so many different outlooks on life, homeschooling. I mean, I'm listening to people moaning and crying and, and I'm not working. And these are times where I would have been mentally, physically just in such a state. But you know what? I'm just I feel so, so grateful having the opportunity to watch my wee one growing up for a day homeschooling or be part of our wee journey as well. And I can safely say I would never have heard that if I didn't mean for what I've done last year. Yeah, well, I, I know living in Edinburgh, um, you and I enjoyed a great bit of banter, but I think that that's a good point you make about the, the serious side of things. Um, when you look back on your life, most people would have given the right arm even to, for example, pull on your boyhood hero's jersey at Hearts. Uh, but most people were given the right arm to play uh, football at a professional level the way you did. Um, do you look back on it um, with, um, you know, the glass half empty or the glass half full? Listen, I feel like the luckiest guy in the world, to be fair. I mean, I, I lived a life that was just unmanageable. Um, I mean, my life was just horrendous. I mean, I got to play football. How have I ever managed to play 10, 11 years of football and done as well as what I've done? And yeah, you could look back and say, you know what, I could have done a lot better. Definitely could have made a lot more money. Definitely. But you know what, I wouldn't be the person on the day I've had not been through all these struggles. And yes, I'm just grateful for the opportunities I've had. I'm grateful for all the people I've met along the way. And as I said, it's not about Kevin Toddle, the football player in the mail. It's not about living up to this expectation. It's just this lonely boy, this boy that, yeah, as I said, I was a character. I think every boy you speak to, every football club I was at, everybody loved me. I was fun. I was the big joker. And But underneath all that, you know what, there was a there was kind of a lonely boy who was a wee bit lost in life as well. Um, and it took me, as I said, to last year to have to do something about it. And it's gave me just so much mental strength as well. But it's gave me so much appreciation for just the things that are really important to me today. 
Well, well, that's interesting to hear because, you know, some people would look at the book Life on the Line and say, OK, there's a defining moment where he came out of a dark place and I know that you've got the love of your daughter uh, and it means so much to you. But this seems to be another dark place, another part of the journey where you, you feel as if you've been tested again. Yeah, as I said, January 28th last year, I was sick and tired. And, I was sick and tired of being sick and tired of life, not my gambling, real life. And I kind of just put my hands, I went down to a treatment centre in Peebles and my, my best friend's a therapist in there and just basically broke my heart saying, listen, I've, I've stopped gambling for a, a number of years. Um, but I, a one person said to me when I first walked into jail, a person said to me, if you don't change the person that walks in, you'll walk back at the same person. And it's so, so true. It's all right writing a book. It's all right telling people what to do. It's all right being this boy that's filled with so much ego, so much pride, so much all these kind of character defects that I've had and having to live up to this person that people perceive as. And yeah, I mean, it, it was just nice to bear my soul and be honest. And he put me in touch with someone who's was an alcoholic who's five years um, sober and in recovery as well. And yeah, I mean, I've, I've spent a lot of years abstaining from gambling, but I never ever changed as a person. And, and I never want to go through life having my daughter seeing the kind of character defects I have every day. And, and listen, she'll build her in me character, but I want to be the person that is a, is a good example to her. And, and listen, every day is not great, let me tell you, but I have this box of tools where I can I can make sure that I can make every day the person that I'm meant to be. I'm not meant to be somebody else. I'm meant to be just on my wee journey and where I am. And, and I kind of see it, ref, it reflects and it, it rubs off kind of on other people as well. And a lot of it is just being there for everybody, being there for, but first and foremost for myself, but trying to be there for other people because the way we are in life just now in society, people are really struggling just now and it's tough to see. Yeah, and with that in mind, Kevin, was there someone there who spotted the signs or did you have to actually, I mean, if you go somewhere for a, you know, to say, look, I need to bear my soul, I need to say how I'm feeling right now, was there someone there to help you to see the signs of, you know, you may be hitting the edge again? No, I had to come for deep within myself. I never had anybody. When I walked into GA in 2004, I had Grant Bremer, who I was, I was the luckiest guy in the world. He was a footballer and he kind of said, if you come into this place, this will kind of change your life. And, and it did. It gave me it gave me hope. The one thing it gave me was hope. But it never took me to where I really wanted to be. And it took me 15, 16 years later to go through, as I said, this programme of looking back at my past, looking back at all these things that I've kind of hid deep inside and been able to strip myself bare and have this opportunity. To... But no, I was looking at another person again, a boy, Tony Marini, who's a therapist in Castle Craig, my best pal. He walked to GA 2005, a year after me, and we just grew up this massive friendship. And I knew he was a therapist down there, and I just, I, I made I made a telling decision just to say, you know what, I need to help. I need to put my hands on the table, cards on the table, day in, and you can with me. I'm here just to want change, and I'm, I'm willing, uh, open and honest, and want things to change, because the way I was in life, I was still walking, I mean, you're in GA. You're meant to be walking about as this example. I still had all this anger, ego, pride, just I had so much, so many selfish, so many character defects that I really, really wanted to change. And I don't know, something always happens in life. I went to a place in 2004 where I'd never been before. I called it a black hole, as I mentioned in my book. And I was back in that black hole again. And I do believe firmly that if I hadn't changed, I, I didn't know where I would be today. I certainly don't think when I got through lockdown last year, if I'm being honest with you. If, you know, you, you hide it well. Um, and I, and I, I kind of it's heartbreaking to hear because I, I look at your tweets and, and it's not a reflection of life, but I look at your tweets and I think, oh, big Kev's out there running, and he says if he can do it, anybody can do it. I go out running regularly, you know. I think uh, I think my love of ice cream is killing me, Kev. To be honest with you, but nevertheless, I still I still look at you and I think he's out running. I'm going to go out running as well. But I, I just I, I look at this story that you're telling me that's unfolded and and it's almost as if every day is is a battle for you in this latest um you know trauma yeah i think it's a battle for everybody it's not just me it's just about being honest with yourself and yeah just listen honesty is the biggest thing that i've learned over the last year if i'm struggling talk about it because if you didn't talk about it like everybody in life now it's all right to have this big persona and have this big character that's and you know what? The last year has been life changing for me. Um, yeah, and there's times where, yeah, there's times where you have you have days where you struggle, and 
but you know what? I feel so much different. I feel so much more positive. But it's unfortunate that I had to go through a, a nine months of painstaking journey um, going through this program. And yeah, it's the greatest thing I've ever, ever done. Um, and people will only get to see, you look at people in life and people think, you've got the greatest life in the world, you're off they're a great show and everybody, but no one ever really gets to see the, the kind of real side to you is the, the realness. I mean, everybody, you, you live up to this. And, and you know what? I, I live up to day just being myself. And if I can help anybody in any way, regards my running. And I do believe it. I really believe that if I can run, anybody can run. I mean, I was so mentally lazy, physically, and just having these opportunities, is, it's just rubbed off on everything in my life, regards my daughter, regards my wife, regards everybody that's important to me in life. And to be able to share that wee journey and let people know, you know what, it's okay not to be okay, but it's okay to be okay as well. So it's about sharing and trying to be there for other people. I've, I've been a selfish person through my whole life. Yeah, I've gave people hope and yeah, I've, yeah, but just it's been false hope for, for today. I know I've got a wee bit of structure behind my chat. Before I just chatted, now I can listen yeah. and kind of learn. What about the last 12 months? What's the best bit of advice you feel the strongest part that's got you through this? Just being honest, Peter, being honest. I've never been able to be honest in all my life. As I said, I stopped gambling. I was still lying, manipulating. I was still doing things that I wasn't proud of. And just be honest. Being honest with yourself is the greatest gift ever. As I said, I had to work hard to realise what being honest was. There's there's an honest and there's a proper being honest. And the day, being really honest with yourself, and if you're struggling, speak about it. Today's society, you've got an opportunity to do that. Back in the day when I was playing football, I couldn't even imagine telling half the managers where I was in life and the things I was doing um, because they were so they were so wrong. But today, there's a lot of people struggling out there today and it's just, it's nice to be a good person and be able to be there for other people. First and foremost though, I had to change the person I was. All I've done for other people through the years has helped other people and never helped myself. Today, I believe I've helped myself and I've got an opportunity to, to give that wee bit of hope. I, I'm, I'm getting double hope now. I have hope in my life and my daughter's called Hope and I just feel like the, I feel like luckiest guy in the world now. Yeah, just on that point, um, I, I thought you had a lot of, I mean, I know you said that you, you would lie, you would manipulate, there were things that you didn't like about yourself. I, I always, like many others, found you, uh, you know, the positive aspects of Kevin Twaddle. Do you still hold on to them? I mean, you know, great personality, um, at times inspirational. Um, I look back on your talent and think, oh, it was a joy to absolutely watch you. To say that I could, you know, I've seen Kevin Twaddle stirring his stuff was great. You brought people joy with that. Do you hold on to the things that are positive that were good about you? Barry, that was very kind of you. Thanks for that. It was very nice. Um, and it's always nice to hear nice things about yourself. Yeah, listen. I can't change the past, I can only change the day and I can only change tomorrow. I, I look back on it and I'm grateful all the things I've done in my life today, I'm grateful I've done them because it gives me the opportunity to be the person on the day. Sometimes you've got to have this thing called, for me, I thought I got it in 2004, but I think I really got it in January 2020, I got this thing called gifted desperation. I'd had a life of, yeah, and I'd got to a point where I was desperate, desperate for change, desperate for help. and. I was lucky that there was people there for me that gave me what I've got today. And now it's about doing a, it's called a step 12. It's about helping other people and yeah, being there for other people, making sure that people know there's people like me out there that can help them. And yeah, as long as I'm helping myself, I've got an opportunity to help other people. And I'll never forget the things I've done. I've got an amazing, yeah, my, I can still tell stories to my wee girl and I, she probably finds it hard to believe. She sees the size of me now thinking that I was this big tall gang that winger, but yeah, I'm, I'm just, I feel so grateful and I'll never forget what I've done. It's been amazing, but there's been parts of it, obviously, that have been tinged by not being the real me and today it's good just to be the real me. Yeah, and um, what, what are you doing now? Is that a job for you? Is that a is that a full-time job? Where is Kevin Twaddle now? No, I'm, I'm still obviously working. I've got my own painting business, which, you know, that this this programme I've, I've, I've got as well, it's given me so much in my workplace as well. I was talking to people like like rubbish um just being angry all the time being just just really low self-esteem but having to live to this having big ex, big self-esteem and no the day it just it rubs off on every day in my life today it rubs off especially in work and stuff like that the workplace is good um but the day it's about homeschooling because painters are not working um i know there probably is some painters out there working because you've got to it's life is tough just now but i'm in a in a, in a lucky enough position that you know what I'm getting to homeschool my wee girl Jack's working um, every day and working hard every day so it gives me the opportunities to 
And you know what's the hardest job in the world? Mentally, physically. But I get the opportunity to go out at night. I get the opportunity to clear my head and and just be grateful for the times that I'm getting to spend with her and being, yeah, being there. I've never, I've been there for her, but I've never been there mentally and physically. It's hard to explain that, but the day I'm, I know I'm there for my daughter mentally and physically, I'm setting a good example to her, and that, that's the most important thing in the world to me. Got to ask you this, Kevin. You speak so highly um, of your family, your wife and your, your, your daughter. Do they deserve a medal for, for the qualities that they've uh, been able to show? It's not until you really go through doing what I've done as well that, yeah, I mean, it's, you, you actually, you didn't know that you live behind this mask and it's a mask for every situation that you're in and for every person that you deal with, for their expectation of you. And you didn't realise that your own bar has either been set that high and your perfectionism, which is a big problem of mine, I want to be perfect all the time and I'm never going to be perfect all the time and I'm never going to be this expectation of what people have got. As long as I know my expectations and where I am, and I, I'm the luckiest guy in the world having a, having a wife and the wee girl I've got, of yeah, my wife's put up with, yeah, and everybody, that's what I'm saying, you live in, a, you live in meetings and you're talking in meetings about being this great person and being this, you, this is what you've got to do in life and you're giving everybody all this hope, but you're forgetting about who the, really the most important people are and the way you should be talking in the room should be the way you live your life in the house and I was not doing that. So, yeah, it's took, a, it's took a lot to do it, but it's the greatest thing I've ever done. And I have to say, Kevin, uh, I'm delighted that you are getting out of a dark place again. Um, the biggest lesson, I think, for anyone who was listening to it is the fact that you need your family around you. You need people who love you, who care for you, to be there with you. And, and of course, every now and then, an old friend that passes through. We've got the couch here. The minute we get out officially with the First Minister's blessing, Ruffy and I want you here on this couch, hopefully in the studios, to come and have a bit of banter with us. Would that be possible? Oh, you know, I mean, after the long, after the long uh, friendship with you as well, and yeah, even your message that David David me smile, I have to say, just no hearing from you for a while, and then hearing, like, getting, getting to be messaged, and obviously asking to do a wee bit of this as well, because it spreads that wee bit of, you know what, that, that we're all in the same boat, it doesn't matter who you are and what you do, we're all in that same boat, and we all need that, as you say, that wee bit of love and support, and I would love to be here, I've missed Ruffy as well, it's nice to, to listen to the banter as well, the banter's class. Brilliant. Listen, you're an inspiration to many people, I'm sure, by hearing your voice and the words that you've spoken today will uh, not only inspire, but help people who are maybe in a similar position. Kevin, it's been a joy speaking to you. I will make a point of getting through to my favourite city, Edinburgh, and walking alongside your running as well. Thanks for joining us. Thanks very much, Peter. Thank you.